Welcome back to What RT Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the 212A, it's the Tier 9 Soviet SPG, located on the eastbourne of Studyanki under the command of Mighty Dwarf 36. And he's actually platooning with his son in this game. He's in the E75 Ogefair 123, so this should be an unusual battle. Well, we've got another doctor in the group, yes, because, um, Mighty Dwarf is actually a doctor, just like um, Captain Ashstorm. And well, he's been watching our videos, and specifically the video on the 212A, and some of the videos showing the positions that we've used to fire from with this vehicle. And the thing is that he's actually had a rather good game in the 212A, and he wanted to share it with us. And show us what he'd actually learned. Okay, so he's gone down to the south end to get good position on the enemy who are attacking near the factory area. His son's actually gone up to the power plant and he's looking to try and get shots on the enemy who are in the north woods. Now, we just lost the Progetto 46. We're spotting that T-54. Now watch as he moves backwards and forwards along that line. He's doing a quick spot to see if anyone's there on the other side. The Pantera did not go up and as a result that means we've got nobody close enough to actually spot where the T-54 is located. So we need him to come over to this side of the wood in order to actually know. There's the Progetto wreck. There he is. Okay, so he's probably going to be trying to take shots at the P-44. And I think he's headed for that rock. No, he's actually trying to move a lot closer. Oh, well, fired the round in. Unfortunately, we didn't see a tracer because I think he's got the same bug. Or I've got the same bug <laughs> on my computer regards the tracer. Yeah, so I think since uh, 1.9, there's been a lot of bugs on the computers. In fact, I can't even operate my Object 261 on this um, this client without going into safe mode simply because it won't run it just won't operate it just crashes the game every time and that's very unfortunate it seems to be it just doesn't like tier 10's Russian RT or Soviet RT well he's got a kill AMX M449 came too close around that corner and he's taken him out okay next target well <laughs> that pattern didn't survive very long there. Got a Progetto 46 retreating up that tree line. The T-54E1's taken over in the north. The T-54 was wiped out. Okay, we're waiting for him to come into sight again. We lost the Pantera though. That was the one that was in the wood in B7. Or was it B8? Sorry. Up here we've got an SU-101, very low hit points, but he's obviously trying to support the E-75 at the power plant. Most of our force appears to be going around the south, and that looks good because they are actually well beyond the ditch now and moving around to the other side. I think they've stopped temporarily because there is a tank destroyer blocking their path, taking shots at them as they come around the corner. The Progetto headed north, so he's more than likely a bit further up than that indicator on the minimap. And, oh, now, Object 257 up near the power plant has actually moved, changed position. He's not facing off against the E-75 anymore. He's actually sitting on the corner trying to take shots to the south. So firing around in there is actually going to help our team. And, yep, managed to get some splash off him, 244. We've got a Scorp G in the ditch now that's that uh, depression in the ground actually protects him from being seen by our star one but he can actually get some shots of our guys in fact some of our guys have actually gone up on top of that ridge line to spot out the enemy and well they're being fired at centurion 5-1 is he going to fire another one into that corner to try and get the object 257 not yet 
decided to go for the Centurion 5-1 instead. And, oh, there's a SU-130PM. And he dies very suddenly. And it's a good job that Mighty Dwarf didn't fire at that point because he would have wasted a shell. But that's not a wasted shell. That's a good shell. I knew it was a good one because the Progetto stopped, turned, and I thought, yeah, you're going to take that shell. And he ate the shell and died. Okay, well, now it's safe enough to move up. But that 257 is now having a go at our E75. And of course that's um, Mighty Dwarf's son. Going for that Scorp G in the ditch. Fires around in. He's probably not moved but we didn't see the tracer or if there was any damage or if it stopped. Okay the 257 is, well he's low on hit points. I wouldn't say he's a splash kill and whisker unless we get the shell very close, but the E75 is definitely a one shot, I'm afraid. He's lost most of his health. And the T54E1 has moved down from the wood to the north, which means our SU101 is only really holding that 257 back, as well as the E75 for that matter. And as the best thing we can do right now is wait for that 257 to make the mistake of coming too close around the corner oh he's pulling away and there's the scorpion G but he's still 100% so we know that our previous shell didn't actually hit the target okay lining up another shot he's tracked rounds out close oh yes he got him we didn't see the explosion because I think it actually the reason we didn't see the explosion, I think, was because he actually lost sight of him or unspotted him just as the shell impacted. And then, obviously, the wreck reappeared immediately and with the, recording, uh, with the text underneath saying it was destroyed. So he's showing three kills now. He's having a good game. Yeah, that... Object 257 is still threatening. He's loaded. He's got the 203mm howitzer. 30.85 seconds is the reload time, which is actually pretty good. You can get a very good reload on these RTs simply because you can use vents, BIA crew, and vent purge to actually boost the speed of reload and dialing the aim in as well. And, oh no, the T-54E1 just came up, sneaked up around the outside, and has just taken out our teammate, our platoon mate, and Mighty Dwarf's son. And now he's having a go at the SU-101. And now we're only one tank up. We've got a hit on the T-54E1, but it now will be a good time to propel yourself and get round to the other side of the map, because our guys have conquered the other side. And that means that um, if he goes over to that side of the map, there's a pretty good chance he will be able to um, shoot at the enemy unhindered. This The enemy still has an RT. There's, they've only got four, four vehicles left. But just looking now to see if we can find that RT. He might be up in the north. The ISM might be about to find him. And yes, he has been found. There he is. Lining him up. He must know that the shell's about to come in. He's been badly hit. Rounds out. Long flight time for the shell. Oh, he was only stunned by that shot. That was unfortunate. Only stunned. He's moving down the railway line now to, to get into uh, cover. And the unfortunate thing now is it's five versus four. Now, all of the enemy appears to have their tanks in the north of the map at the moment. Okay, he's stopped to actually take a shot at the Striv up in the north wood. Strivs do not react very well to uh, RT rounds. Rounds out. No result from that one showing. Now, I believe we actually worked out why the reticule uh, drifts during the game. We thought that it was um, a mod fault. 
Uh, although it's not been absolutely specified that it definitely is the cause, but we believe that the reason why the reticule drifts in one direction when you're aiming at a particular target is that it's trying to tell you that there's a spotted target somewhere else and which direction that target is. And there's the target at the moment, T-54E1. Fires around in at him. Oh, good kill! Right into his rear, underneath the shield of that uh, roof. He probably didn't expect to get hit like that. But that means now it's down to just two on the enemy team. A Strip 103 and a Yank Panther 2. The only unfortunate thing is that we've only got two RT on our team. And the medium tank, the Object 430, up in the north. Now the Object 430 is quite a good medium. Not as good as its brother, the 430U, but it's still very good. So it looks like it's going to be up to uh, Mighty Dwarf to actually get into the enemy cap area, put pressure on the enemy, and then force the Jagdpanther 2 and the Striv to try and get a reset, and that should help them win. In fact, yeah, the Baraskas asked one RT, please cap. I think he knows it's the smart move. Put some pressure on the enemy. The other RT can stay in position and wait until the enemy appears and then starts hitting them hard. And of course the guy who's capping can also do the same. He's headed for the, the bush line. It's not a tree line, it's a bush line. <laughs> but he's headed for the line to protect himself just in case the enemy has returned. I'm taking a bit more direct now to get to the cap area. It looks like the enemy decided to destroy their house before leaving the cap area. Now I think one of the other content creators noticed the other day, oh they are capping! The enemy are capping. One of the content creators noticed the other day that um, a lot of the German players we're actually destroying any destructible scenery before they were leaving the area uh, to ensure that there was nowhere they could hide. Well, that seems to be the most logical place. And we just saw a bit of destruction going on. So I suspect that somebody is actually located there. One of the vehicles, if he lands the shell into that spot, I suspect he will find that there is an enemy tank in uh, residence. Two in the cap now. Yes, there he is, the Panther. Will he get a reset? Yes, I think he did. Yep, definite reset. Now it's going to become a capping battle because we know where the enemy are. And the 430 is going up to get a reset as well. So he's going to appear. We've lost the RT in the south. He got taken out. Okay, there's the Jagdpanther. We're about to shoot. Rounds out straight away. Direct hit! 464, good hit, solid hit. So long as we can keep getting resets and our Object 430 gets them as well, we could win this, but they're getting very close now. The 413 needs to get a shot on target. And he does! Now, is there a difference? Yes, there is a difference, because the Yank Panther is now dead. He can't, uh, the Striv can't get back in time. And now Mighty Dwarf gets the last shot of the game, just as the Cap wins. Oh, and he killed him! He got him five kills. One third of the enemy team. And wins the game by wipeout as well as capping. In fact, he capped out before he killed the last one, so... Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Well, second class tanker for Mighty Dwarf 36 in the 212A. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five. He got a back Raider medal. He got the Raider Invader. He was never spotted by the enemy and he won by capping. And uh, he got the Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 10. A defender for resetting the cap enough times to get at least 70 defense points. And of course the Invader medal for capping out at the other end and getting at least 80 cap points and winning by cap. Wow, that was quite a game. Let's have a look at the team scores. 
Well, we can see that the highest damage was done by the 430. Yes, um, he was the one who managed to get the most damage. 4,143 hit points of damage went to him. The next high scorer was the T54E1 on the enemy team with 3914. And then there's Striv with 3359. We can see that Mighty Dwarf managed to get 2,460 hit points of damage, which is uh, pretty good. And, of course, he got the very important medals, the Defender and the Invader, which helped us to win this game. Uh, when it came to kills, yes, it's definitely Mighty Dwarf with five kills, four kills for the Object 430. And when it came to base XP, yes, it's the other way round again. It's the Object 430 getting 1,132. Then it's the Brask with 945. And then... Mighty Dwarf with 908 and well a special mention goes to Mighty Dwarf's son who in the E75 managed to get 1412 hit points of damage didn't get any kills but he did get 607 base XP from that game 13 shots fired 5 direct hits no penetrations but 14 splash damage of 2460 hit points all of it done at more than 300 meters he damaged 7 of the enemy killed 5 and did 1043 hit points of stun assist you don't often see that 100 capture points, 100 defense points in a game. Yes, he reset the cap enough times to actually end up with 100 defense points. And, of course, he was the only one capping at the other end, which made the, the battle certain. And, in fact, good job the Barask noted that and said somebody should go cap. And, of course, that's exactly what Mighty Dwarf was already intending to do. 38,703 credits from the game, 24,830 in ammunition, and he took away 13,875 credits profit. 61 bombs from that game. It was a tier 9 game, not tier 10, but he did very well indeed. And 1,362 XP from that game, times 5 for that victory, 6,810 altogether. What a great game it was, and it was down to the wire as well, because the battle lasted 13 minutes, 40 seconds, so they were on the clock. If they hadn't moved when they did, it would have got very close to being a timeout battle, a draw. But uh, yes, the, it looks like the enemy realised the, the trouble they were actually in, and rather than actually return to defend their cap, they wanted to go for um, a, a cap at the other end, and they both decided to get in the cap very, very quickly, which put the struggle on Mighty Dwarf's team to actually get multiple resets. Because when you've got two tanks in the cap like that, it's a lot of pressure on whoever's capping at the other end, even if it's only one against two opponents who are capping, because obviously they have the cap advantage. But uh, oh, they managed to pull it off and to get that kill with the last shot of the game just after he'd finished capping... That just was the cherry on top of the cake. Well done indeed. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching.